discussion is titled Gastrointestinal Pathology and the Use of the Specific Carbohydrate Diet in Children on the Autism Spectrum, and it is in memory of the late Elaine Gottschalt and her 50 years of dedication and work. We will click, quickly review the research so we can spend most of our 30 minutes on the gastrointestinal pathology, the dietary interventions, and the potential outcomes. But we first have to take a quick look at the current research since once you leave this environment with like-minded pa parents and practitioners, you will find that there are still two ongoing problems. The first problem is that gastrointestinal issues are still unrecognized and untreated, even in the children with obvious problems like diarrhea and constipation, but especially in the nonverbal children whose GI discomfort expresses itself as what people would consider a behavioral problem, like nighttime awakening, screaming, crying, etc. The second problem is that specialized diets are still being met with great resistance. Although Jenny McCarthy's media connection have opened some mainstream doors, we're still finding that the major hospitals, most local pediatrician, and some diagnostic centers, at least in the Boston area, do not support dietary interventions. Fortunately, we now have strong scientific support for the improvement we've seen in our children who follow elimination diets. And fortunately, the gastroenterologists and researchers specializing in autism are in agreement. They have all found injury, inflammation, maldigestion, malabsorption, an overgrowth of bacteria, and enzyme deficiencies, which all, will all play a pivotal role in your child's language, behavior, mood, attention, and bowel problems. In addition, Dr. Horvath and Drs. Bowie, Winter, and Kushak also found intestinal brush border enzyme deficiencies, which I believe is one of the most important findings for dietary intervention. Now, in order to understand the concept of what we call the gut-brain connection, we first have to look at some very important fundamental aspects of the GI system. The gastrointestinal system is essentially a long tube running right through the body. It has specialized sections that are capable of digesting material, extracting the nutrients, and expelling the waste. The GI tube, sort of speak, is coated with a bacterial layer. This layer provides a natural barrier against invaders, undigested food, toxins, and parasites. It also produces an antibiotic-like and antiviral and antifungal substances as well. So the gastrointestinal flora is the housekeeper of this system. And without this balance of good flora working in harmony, the body is not protected, and the gut wall is open to invasion by anything that comes along. When you take a closer look at the tube, this is a cross-section, so you cut the tube and take a look inside of the small intestine, you will find this absorptive surface where there are finger-like protrusions called villi. This is a closer look at the villi. The hills and valleys are the villi. There are cells that coat this villi, and these are the cells that complete the digestive process and absorb the nutrients from food. The cells are born in the valleys, and they slowly travel to the top of the villi, doing their important job of absorbing and digesting. And when they reach the top, they get sloughed off. This is a delicate system. On the top left is a picture of a healthy, mature, absorptive cell with enzymes. But when there's an imbalanced flora, this whole renewal system gets out of whack. And you end up with a flattened, injured, immature, absorptive cells on your bottom right with enzyme deficiencies and malabsorption. 